Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at the Cray booth at SC11 in Seattle. Today, we're here with Barry Bolding. He's the newly announced Vice President of uh, Storage and Data Management, right? Yep, that's correct, Rich. So, what did you guys announce today that's all new in the storage space? Well, uh, Rich, we announced a new store integrated Luster storage product, uh, the Cray Synexion, and uh, this is actually really exciting for us because it's a, a, not just a storage product from the sense of, of disks and some switches, it's really an integrated storage product where from the factory from the ground up, it's designed with uh, storage, with servers, with um, software, including the Luster software pre-installed at the factory, and with Cray's uh, storage uh, system management utilities that are all web-based or command line interface based, where you can actually manage an entire file system, a Luster file system, from that interface. And so, so it's really exciting because it is completely designed, tested in the factory before it's even shipped. Now this is kind of different than uh, Luster devices have been in the past, and they kind of just ship bare metal, and you worry about it when it got to the site. Well, or or, or they were shipped to Cray, and then we would do the integration with Luster. We do the software installs. We'd bring together servers from one company, storage from another company, and we'd make sure that it all works. We've been in the Luster business for a long time. We've been delivering Luster products on our systems for uh, since around the time of Red Storm, and so eight eight years of Luster experience scale. Scaling Luster, productizing Luster, hardening Luster, we have that experience. And so what we've done is we've we've looked at how to design a product that has all of those components, but doesn't have to be all built individually for each customer, can actually be packaged and shipped to the customer and really productized for multiple customers and multiple markets. Would it be fair to call this an appliance or is that a bit of a stretch? Well, we don't like the term appliance because you definitely do need to, uh, you know, you always want to tune a Lustre file system for the workloads that you have, but it's as close to an appliance as you could possibly get, I think, with storage today, given all of the interface and the testing and the factory shipping of everything pre-installed. So, so we don't call it an appliance, but it, it's as close as you can get today. Okay. So today the news came out, Cray One Blue Waters. Yes. And I, as we were speaking earlier, I learned that a lot of this uh, storage is going to be deployed there. Yep. What were the compelling reasons that they chose this kind of storage device? Well, uh, for Blue Waters, uh, they really have a requirement for sustained applications petaflops. And to do sustained applications work, you need high reliability on your I.O. file system, and you need uh, a really hardened infrastructure. And they, we've looked at, with the customer, we went and looked at all possible solutions. and. We have over 30 cabinets of Cray Synexion going into Blue Waters, providing over a terabyte per second of, uh, of uh, applications file system performance and over 25 petabytes of, uh, of uh, storage for that customer. And so really it will be one of the largest Lustre installations, largest high performance computing uh, storage in installations in the world. Well, can we take a look? Can you yep. See? So what are we looking at here, Mary? So, so uh, the key to the Cray Synexion is really redundancy. Because if you're going to have a high reliability Lustre file system and scalability, you need to have redundancy and scalability built into the modules from the ground up. So what we're looking at at the top is a management module that's redundant. So basically in the management module, we have redundant metadata servers uh, fail over, so if one server fails, uh, it's able to fail over to the other server. These are um, these metadata servers are basically uh, server units with memory processors. They have uh, Intel processors. They have memory, and they're able to manage all of the metadata for all of the file system that you're going to line up. Whether you had just one unit or whether you had 10 cabinets in your file system, these redundant management units would be managing all of the metadata for all of the files in your file system, in your Lustre file system. So that's pre-installed and tested at the factory, ready to roll. Um, and then the Synexion unit, these are what we call SSUs. So this is, a, this is actually a server unit. It includes 84 disks. It includes two servers, two Lustre servers built into the back of the drawer. 
a redundant servers. So again, if one fails, it's able to fail over to the other. And then you would just stack additional ones into your file system. So you can start with anywhere from, if you had one terabyte drives in here, this would be about 60 terabytes of usable storage in one drawer. And then you would come in 60 terabyte chunks. If these were two terabyte drives, this would be 120 terabytes. And basically, you build up your storage file system in a, in a modular fashion, each, mo each unit with its own servers. So scalability-wise, you have plenty of server performance to be able to manage data coming in and out of these units. Um, and then you have whatever compute you hook it up to. So in this case, we actually ha have it hooked up to a cluster. And so this cluster is doing I.O. Through the doing I/O to the to the storage servers and doing all of the metadata um, information on the files and where they're located and how they're striped is all going to the metadata units. Okay, I'm curious about bandwidth here, Barry. As yep. you add these, do you increase? Absolutely. Uh, you do. Absolutely. Each one of these can drive about three gigabytes a second of I/O bandwidth, and as you add them, you're adding scalable bandwidth. Each one at about three gigabytes per second of, of scalable bandwidth. Okay. And then for the metadata server, is there a certain ratio of so many of these to a rack? Or how does that no, so, so the, um, it depends on how many file systems you have in your supercomputer. If you have only one file system, let's say a scratch file system, you only need one of these units, and then you just add multiple units, multiple cabinets. Uh, the way Lustre works is it has one metadata unit for each file system on a supercomputer. So this unit would be one shared between however many of these SSUs, you could have anywhere from one to, to several hundred of these on a single file system, all using the same metadata unit. And then at the top, I forgot to mention, we actually have the InfiniBand switching. So each rack has its own InfiniBand switches built into the rack. So as you add cabinets, you actually scale the InfiniBand network that is supporting all of the I.O. And so you need no external, no external InfiniBand switches to support uh, the I.O. to the unit. Excellent. So Derek, Rob, um, you know, I heard a lot about this. I'm finally getting to see what are we looking at here for the storage management? What is it? Well, Rich, this is, as we've told you, a fully integrated system, not like we've done in the past to build things from components. And so what we've tried to do here is integrate an overlaying software, an umbrella software, if you like, that can manage the whole system through what we call a single pane of glass. In the component system, you would have had to, for example, have an interface into each of the controllers in this block storage devices. That meant many windows. That meant you know scanning and, and maybe things were hidden that you didn't want hidden. So here, we've tried to integrate them, as I say, into a single pane of glass that allows you to monitor at the very lowest levels uh, all of the characteristics of the system. In a full rack of Synexion, there are actually over a thousand uh, individual sensors for power, for uh, data transfer, uh, for connectivity that can be monitored at any given point in time. Now, clearly, that's too much to see an overwhelming amount of data, but we've brought that up in a stack, if you like, so that you can go down and eventually get to that level if you need to. But basically, we monitor things, and this is probably the broadest view of the system, where you're seeing four windows, one indicating the current status here, one indicating the network health, and by network health, we're really referring to the InfiniBand network that's connected here. This shows the network map. Now, for this one, it's fairly straightforward and trivial. But this becomes very important when you get to a system the size of the Blue Water system that we just announced. The storage system in that is going to be of such a magnitude that you will want to be able to walk through in a, in a pane of glass uh, sense, walk through the network and check down to individual links, right? And as you can see here, there's an availability report. So this is being compounded up. So at any point in time, you can see, you can look back in the history, click on one of these screens and start to dive down. Now, there's nothing wrong with the system at the moment. What we did was we set the thresholds very low so that some things that are look like they're having a problem show up in red. Because if we put them normally, you wouldn't see anything here. Sure. Okay. But 
What you can do here, this is just obviously a PowerPoint slide, but in the real uh, online system, which we are demoing here, you could click on any of these and then click down to the actual problem uh, on the system. The other nice thing to be able to do is to click up here on the performance tab. As you can see, this is all tab driven here. So you can switch over to that, and this allows you to see uh, the individual OST performance. OST is the object storage target. It's a luster term for a group of 10 disks. And you're able to see in this case that there are eight of those and that each one of them is performing a read operation for IOR well over 400 uh, megabytes per second. So the aggregate is 3.7 almost uh, gigabytes per second. So that's why we tell you that a full rack of this can be well over 20 uh, gigabytes per second in performance. Again, very nice to be able to go down, drill down. If one of these were particularly slow, again, you could double click on it to find out why and go down through a stack all the way down without leaving the, this pane of glass, okay? And at any point in time, you can go in and drill down through um, uh, various levels. This one is checking the network speed again, just checking in real time. You can go back through, you know, four hours, 25 hours, one week, one month, and see when there was an interruption in the network service. So we think we've got something that's unique here. It's integrated with the product. That means it gets fully tested with the product. It gets developed for this product. And that's why we think this is different, very much different than the component approach that we've taken in the past and that most people have taken with Luster in the past. And that's why we think it's going to be a better approach. Hopefully we sell lots of these and people are use the system yeah, effectively. Yeah. So. This, this looks like it would really help people be really productive and be rock stars of support. Uh, uh, I, right? th I think so, yes. Uh, you know, there's uh, this is new. This is something uh, that the Luster community hasn't experienced before. But the initial uh, reaction we've had from people is, wow, uh, this is what I've been looking for. And then they start asking questions, specific questions. Could I monitor an individual PDU? That's something I've always wanted to be able to do. Yes, you actually can, right? Uh, because they had a bad experience before and they could never see that. Right. The other thing that we're being asked to do is, can you identify a bottleneck here that we're seeing, you know, some part of the storage system sort of clogging up? Can you connect that to a job, a specific user job? Because again, that's a common thing in large data centers the worst nightmare that they have in the middle of the night to find one user hogging all the resource uh, and nobody else getting to use it. And so things like this, this will change the landscape for usability of, of Lustre.